The Leafs just had maybe the worst overtime, at least over a minute long, that I've seen in the three-on-three -three era. And it came after, well, a pretty leafy breakdown. Let's talk about it. So first, I want to talk about how teams have been playing overtime. One thing I've noticed is that because there's so much space on the ice, and because you can end it in a single rush often, players will often handle the puck pretty conservatively. It's not very often that you'll see someone go back over the blue line on five-on-five, -on -five, but they'll do it all the time in overtime. It's almost like watching soccer. and often, if a team wins a face-off, that will be determinative of the control of play until there's a really good scoring chance. See what Nylander does against Parise here? He controls the play, looks for an opening on the rush, then straight up misses a pass to Matthews, icing the puck. But it would get worse. Despite the Leafs getting control of the puck, Nylander would miss another pass for a second icing. Matthews would then win another draw cleanly, and Nylander would do this. He's crossing over the red line. He's indecisive. For some reason, he looks to pass the puck back and that leads to a really good Islander scoring chance in Nylander rightfully breaking his stick. Now, I don't want to be too harsh. This was the end of a long three-on-three -three OT shift. He was also trying to decide, I think, how to handle the line change, but I mean, at least try to take the puck deep. Anyway, the Leafs would win another face-off. They take a rush to the Islander zone, then Marner would try this in the middle of the ice. No look back pass to Matthews that's taken, and the Islanders eventually score off the possession. I just don't know what he was thinking. I don't know whether Hall was in the wrong position. It honestly reminds me of like NHL be a pro if Matthews made a bad call for pass. I think Marner was probably not comfortable continuing the rush on his backhand, but if that's the case, he should have just went back over the blue line and regrouped. Justin Hall also probably could have taken a pass, especially if he were in better position. Anyway, as I said, that led to the goal and the Leafs collapse was finalized. But let's talk about the rest of the game. In the first goal, hey, the Islanders score on a pretty weak turnover from a blind drop pass in the O zone and what was ultimately a tough deflection. Dobson, however, had a really nice, smart, conservative play here. He saw that he might bobble the puck on the blue line and instead chose to back up and prepare for the rush. Also, nice job by Barzell controlling play on this one. The tying Toronto goal came on the PP on a beautiful set play down low to Tavares in the slot. Youth hockey coaches across the world saw that one, grabbed their DVR and their chalkboards. Also, Islanders fans, are you guys still mad at JT? I'm not trying to be cheeky here, I'm just curious. Anyway, the go-ahead goal was an absolutely beautiful deflection by Matthews for gold number nine on the year. Then the implosion began. With nine minutes left after two good offensive rushes, including some tough forechecking by the skilled guys and the yarn croak line, Shalgren had a horrendous giveaway. Probably a miscommunication with Ben, but either way, it went straight to Bailey, who did not miss. Anyway, surely a disappointing night for the Leafs, who were hoping to go away with two points, but instead just got one. Did you watch this one? Is the implosion as bad as I said, or am I being a little too critical? Let me know your thoughts and more down below.